Hello and welcome. My name is Hayden Thousand from ThousandFantasy.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to easily create polygroups within a third party software known as Blender. Blender is completely free for all types of use. So if you're not using it already, I highly suggest it. As you can see here, this model has a few assigned polygroups. If I jump over to my Blender file, you'll see that those polygroups are exactly the same as where these colors are. In the following tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to do this within Blender so that you can create your own polygroups easily and efficiently for ZBrush 2. So, using this um, Make Human template as an example, uh, I'm going to then define a few polygroups and then import the object into ZBrush with those polygroups. So all that we're really going to do is we're going to define material groups. Uh, and to do that, we're just going to come over here to our material properties tab. Uh, as you can see, we've already got some materials set up, but we're just going to remove those for now because we're not using the materials as materials. We're only using them to define an area. Uh, originally what we would do is we would use the vertex groups, but as vertex groups and polygroups um, information on export of OBJ is no longer available, uh, we can work around this just using materials. So I'm just going to create a new one and I'm going to call this one and that's just going to be the basis. And then I'm going to create another one, two, another one, three, you can create as many polygroups as you want. I'm also going to change the colors of these just so that they're unique and we're able to view them on our character for a better user experience. Next, I'm going to go into tab edit mode by pressing tab and I'm just going to select areas that I would like my polygroups. So maybe I'd like the arm. So I'm just going to select the arm using my uh, loop selection tool by holding alt. I'm going to isolate it by hiding those parts and then selecting my arm by pressing L, then pressing Control I to select the inverse and hiding it. I'm then going to select my arm, pressing L, and then I'm going to assign my material. By pressing Alt Z, I'm able to uh, see where that uh, assigned material uh, is placed. And now I'm going to do the rest for the rest of the materials. So pressing Alt H to bring back my mesh. I'm going to select the arm and hide it because I don't want to make any changes to that material. Then let's say I would like to have the head as another polygroup within ZBrush. Again, I'm just going to isolate the head. So selecting the head, Control I, hiding, and then I'm going to drop down to this three, making sure that I have my head selected by pressing A, and I'm going to assign it. And now I can bring back the rest of the mesh. And we'll do it one more time with a leg. So I'm just going to hide the leg, pressing L, Control I, and hide, and then L again making sure that I have my next polygroup selected and assigning it to my selection. Excellent. So we have these four polygroups. We have one arm, a head, a leg, and then the rest of the body. So to export it out, all that we have to do is we're going to go to File, Export, OBJ. Then we're going to find a applicable area to save it in. Make sure that you have selection only if you have multiple objects within your scene. And then you want to come down here to material groups and check that. And that's just going to ensure that the whole process is seamless. I'm going to rename this zbrushasset.obj. And then I'm just going to export that obj. And then let me open zbrush should be in the exact same place. So I'm just going to import that now. Z 
brush asset, open, drag it out, T, and I'm going to put this draw poly frame on. Now what we're going to notice is that the areas of the arm, the leg, and the head as defined in Blender are different colors, although they are quite uh, subtle to the eye. Just to make it a bit more clearer, what I'm going to do uh, is show you that, you that they're most certainly polygroups. So to hide polygroups, you're holding Control and Shift, and then you're left-clicking on the polygroup that you want to select, and it's going to hide everything else. You can click it again, and it'll bring everything back and hide that polygroup. As you can see, polygroups make for uh, making a object in ZBrush much more, uh, what's the word, organized. And it's just a great way of organizing your sculpts in ZBrush. So I hope this has helped anyone that's been trying to get polygroups into ZBrush or would like an easier way of defining polygroups in ZBrush. My suggestion would be to uh, export it out into Blender and then define the material groups and then bring it back uh, with the correct polygroups assigned. Uh, if I've helped you in any way, shape or form, please consider subscribing for more content like this. It helps me out and it just lets me know that people are engaging with the content. Also, I am almost ready to release a comic, uh, a web comic. And I've just been building the site to release it. So that's at fowlsunfantasy.com. It's almost ready now. Uh, so if you could go over there and check it out, still a bit of a work in progress, the site, but uh, by all means, sign up and, um, and you'll be notified by email upon the comics release. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed this video and I hope that it has been informative. This is Hayden Fowlsun from fowlsunfantasy.com signing off.